Here we are at Reading Cinema Morn Ponds. Let's go up and have a look. Before we head upstairs, let's have a look around the foyer. The ticketing area and the candy bar. The hallway down to the theatres. This is quite a nicely set up cinema. Hello Cinema Geeks. Here I am at Morn Ponds Reading Cinema. This is a Kineton house, which are these beautiful German projectors here. We'll go over them in a minute. But uh, as it's going on right in front of me, we'll have a look at a, uh, this unit here. This is how they build their spools for, this, for the movies. Usually they build them up onto two of these single large reels. And when they're going to put them on for the cinema or for the screen, they then wind them up onto the one big platter. As you can see here, they're winding it onto a platter here while there's a movie playing above it um, using this device here. Again, when they're taking them apart, they use the same device so it's easier to deal with it on the uh, work bench and putting it back into reels to be sent back. As you can see here, it's got controls, talks to the platter so they can um, combine so they both uh, wheel on at the right speed. And over here, we've got their Kineton projectors. Um, Steve, the uh, main projectionist here, loves these units, thinks they're the best. German precision at its best. And I must admit, they are a very clean unit, uh, very easy to thread. You can do it very quickly and, um, yes, very nice indeed. This is a Kineton automation system, which actually happens to be a Pennywise automation system they actually make them here in Melbourne, Australia, where I actually live. But let's quickly go over this automation system. This is a quite popular one with many projectionists I've seen. And I quite like it too because it actually tells you what's going on in one panel uh, without many button presses. So to quickly go over what you're looking at, let's have a look, look through the uh, different lights on the system. Here we currently have the selected audio. The selected program that is currently running, for example, for for CinemaScope, for Flat, etc., it changes the program accordingly. You've got the volume control and the timer when you can program the systems to start, etc. You'll notice along the bottom you've got, got basically everything you want to control in the theatre. So you've got your house lights on, half off, stage lights on, off, etc., and what sort of audio you want to be going, uh, widescreen and scope, etc. So along here, basically you have one, two, three, four, five. These are the certain sections of the show that you're at. So when the show first starts, one, you push the show starts, the automation system starts the projector, sets widescreen for this um, program, sets the house lights to half, stage lights to off, and then when it gets to the next section, probably some silver tape on the film, making it click over to the next stage of the automation, it will then Dolby SR and change the volume and so forth each time it jumps to the next section of the program based on an automation message, usually from silver tape on the film. And that's how this Pennywise slash Kineton automation system works. This is a basically an old technology automation system and it usually works basically on contact closures and they might have a serial port to talk to the um, slide projector which I'll show you over here um, there's slide projectors down here at the moment because they're, they're actually showing some alternative content so they've got a temporary setup of an e-cinema system and if we have a look into their rack um, in this in this uh, complex, which this is a um, readings complex, I'm not actually sure how many screens, but if you have a quick look, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's one around the corner there. Um, projectors uh, that I can see right now, and as you know, they're all Kineton. They love the Kineton here. So this is a, a DA20. Dolby DA20. Basically, what this unit does is it takes the video signal coming from the digital head here, oh, down here, 
point the camera in the right direction. And it is actually a video signal which travels over to the back. Oh, it's a bit dark in here. It goes in through this cable here and then comes out as discrete channels through this cable which is going down and into the back of the sound processes here. And then you've got this basically cable's got a little breakout thing which breaks it out to left, right, centre, left, round, uh, left, round, right, round, etc. which are on those pins. Quite strangely like a lot of these uh, cinema processes, are, processes have more of these hands-on connections here like screw, screw in connections etc. The very old ones you have to solder on, thank god that's not that old. Then you've got your amps down the back here etc. Now if we have a quick look through the front again this has got a nice monitoring unit here so you basically you can ask what channel you want to listen to so we just want the centre there's nothing going on the centre at the moment let's have a look at the right or the left we can basically listen to each one in particular just to see if the channels are working properly here in a volume here for example very nice for doing debugging without having to go down to the auditorium and this is the sound processor and you've got your Dolby in coming at the moment you've got your stereo coming in or you can have it stereo with the SR working on it if it's an SR stereo mix that will dematrix the stereo and turn it into a, like a left right centre and a rear uh, it will double SR it and, and pull that out and put it into the, into the right channels and with the slides this is a mini displayer usually controlled via the serial port and the amps down here um, so yes the Kinetron, the Kineton mechanism Steve the projectionist here thinks these are the bee's knees and they do look very nice you can basically see the, um, the wide lens in there and this one down here is a cinemascope and you can tell that because on the cinemascope you have the anamorphic lens if I can point the camera at the right part see that lens there that's the anamorphic lens basically you can see the in that hole there that's the uh, widescreen lens and basically this is a similar lens but on the front of it you have the anamorphic lens to stretch it out to the wider screen basically that's the main difference on the film as you know this, the, the image is compressed and the lens uh, stretches it out so it's the right aspect on the screen Here we can see their little shelves full of all the spare films currently not showing on the screens right at this second. They're coming back here every few, every um, half hour or so and they'll pull one of these out. We're in the middle of, Chris, um, of the holiday season, school holiday, so it's a busy time in the theatre. Here we have a Kineton platter. These are one of the more expensive platters that you can purchase. Um, uh, Steve here thinks they are just the bee's knees mainly because in the very center of this platter you'll notice a special spooling device there. As you can see here the center spooler which is uh, sending the film out from the middle of the, the film roll and into the projector on these Kineton units it's a completely uh, non-moving part. It has LEDs that somehow detect where the uh, film is and spools it at a very good and constant rate. You can actually see it here that it's barely moving, it's basically coming off at exactly the right rate, there's no moving parts etc and as such you know less moving parts, less rare wear, you don't get it winding around sometimes on the older systems when it stops you've got a moving arm that detects where the film is that moves backwards and forwards and it can also spool around there a bit, the film rubs together and of course wears quite a lot. But as you can see here, very, very accurate. Um, yes, couldn't, never seen something like this is the best I've seen in this type of technology here and um, I suppose you pay for it. While I'm here, let's have a quick look at the old Sly projector. These pretty much are done and dusted. 
uh, there's very few of them left and everyone who has them wants to get rid of them as soon as possible. They take a quite a bit of effort to keep all in, in, in check. As you can see here, we have a number of slides in the carousel. And usually when you get the ads for a slide projector, you get the slides, you'll get a list, a paper list of what slide should be on what screen and in what order. And then with that you'll also get the mini disc that goes into the mini disc player. Uh, and uh, basically how it all works is that the automation system back on the projector, when it asks the slides to play, it will send a play command to this. And this will start playing. And at the end of each track, it will send a serial trigger back to the automation. The automation has to be told how many triggers to expect. So in this case we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 slides. And when we get to the ninth, ninth slide uh, and the ninth ad coming out of here and the ninth trigger of end of ad, the automation will know how many you have to program how many slides are in, the, in it and at that stage the Kineton will kick off the next part of the show and reset the slide projector. And that's how slides are done.